Hello and welcome back to NAS Compares and today I want to answer a question that was put to me on NAS Compares a little while ago. So I'm sure you can see on the screen there, I've done an article a little while ago regarding the DS218 Plus against the DS216 Plus. But a lot of you out there, you don't really want to read through the blog and I understand that, there's a lot of text. So what I wanted to do is completely com like summarise it down nice and brief for you, the reasons why you should be choosing the DS218 Plus over the DS216 Plus 2. Now the distance between these two devices, I think it's about a year release difference between them, maybe a year and a half, but the DS218 Plus is just a better two-bay NAS in every single way. Now, I know whenever you see a sale, your Black Fridays, your Boxing Days, your end of years, whatever, you do see a lot of the old Synology NAS devices getting reduced in price. And the DS216 Plus 2 is definitely one of those devices. At the moment, you can pick it up for about 240, 250 quid, and that's without any special discount. Whereas the D18 Plus, which isn't even four or five months old at this stage, is going for about 280 pounds, give or take. So this is not small numbers. These are large sums of money being changed hands. Now the difference, you know, we're talking about near 250 to 300 nicker. The price difference between them, however, is still 30 to 40 quid. Now I know some of you out there are thinking, big work, not a lot of money, but to other people, that can make the difference between a terabyte on each of the drives inside. So straight away, let's talk about the main differences between them. Well, of course, the hardware, the CPU and the memory options inside do differ greatly. The older device, the DS216 Plus, and of course, I'm reading my notes there just behind the camera, um, is it arrives with an Intel Celeron CPU and it's a dual core. And that dual core CPU is a 1.6 gigahertz CPU that can be bursted up to 2.3, 2.4. And again, it's a dual core CPU and it is Intel based, which has got a lot to go in for it. And we'll talk about that later in the video, as well as one gig of DDR3 memory. Now the DS218 Plus, they have upscaled things a little bit. So for a start, they is, it is using the new J-series Intel Celeron CPU, which you're seeing more and more in modern NAS. In the case of this, it is the J3355. That is a dual core 2.0 gigahertz CPU that can be bursted all the way up to 2.5. So better than the 216 in every way. On top of that, it arrives with two gig of DDR3 memory that can be further expanded officially to six gig of DDR3 memory and unofficially up to 10 gig using crucial memory. Do check out my video and the articles on expanding unofficially on the memory and do read that first and take note of the warnings on there. But nevertheless, it is just better uh, CPU and memory options between them. Yes, both of them can perform a whole bevy of tasks that Synology can provide. They can both work with Mac Windows systems. They can both um, transcode 4K files. They can both um, a rough of AES NI encryption, a much more advanced version of encryption. They can both be used as Plex Media Servers. They can both be used for surveillance and both be utilized um, in a very limited capacity for VMs, although you will get better performance in virtual machines on the DS218 Plus. I'm not even sure if Synology Virtual Machine Manager now it's out of beta is still available on the 216 Plus. But the 218 Plus is just a better NAS and it utilizes the DSN 6.1 and indeed 6.2 when it's fully released. Um, operating system far, far greater. Now, moving away from the internal specs and some of those software options, let's look at the, let's look at the ports and some of the hardware there. Now, the DS216 Plus was utilizing um, a chassis there with two removable trays and a removable front panel. 218, exactly the same, but a slightly changed front panel. But for the most part, these chassis are identical. Same number of USB slots, although they are completely USB 3 on the 218, whereas there's a mixture of USB 2 and USB 3 on the older unit. Pfft, who cares about USB 2 anymore? As well as both of them having one gigabit LAN port for Ethernet connectivity, and both of them having the SATA port that lets you connect either an SATA drive or the DX517, though it is hot, worth highlighting that both of them when you, when you attach that expansion, the expansion will be seen as independent storage. So it won't be seen as adding to the RAID. You won't be able to have a two um, drive RAID level there and then add five drives to the RAID. It will be an independently seen area of storage. On the subject of RAID, both of these devices are arrived with the ability to do JBOD, RAID 0, RAID 1, spanning RAID, and of course SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, that wonderful fluid RAID system that only Synology, and dare I say it, Drobo as well, give you. So in terms of physicalities, they're very similar indeed. And it all again comes back to the software inside. 
and the way the device can harness that software. Because once again, the improved CPU and memory, it's not just about the power. The fact that the frequency and the amount of RAM is higher is obviously quite nice, but that's not the be all end all. The J series CPU is a far more efficient chip. It means it would, the 218 Plus will do the same that the 216 Plus can do, but it does it utilizing less power. So it's about efficiency, not overall ability, acceleration versus speed and all that. Now, both of these devices support BTRFS, a wonderful file system with the background snapshots and data integrity checks that BTRFS uh, arrived with. So again, lovely, you get that option on both. But in terms of noise, and again, we go back to the original stats available from Synology, the newer device is a pinch noisier at 19.3 dBA and the older unit at 18.2. But to be perfectly honest, the main reason for that noise difference is because of the internal chassis design changing ever so slightly. And there's just more room for the noise to carry inside the metal internal chassis of the 218. So that's the main reason for that. And most of the noise you're ever gonna get is from the hard drives themselves. The more industrial the hard drive you go for, such as WD Red Pros, HDST drives, pretty much all of them, and Seagate Pro Series Iron Wolf drives, all of those drives, the more industrious you go, the more noise they will make because of the more rugged construction inside the drive. So do bear that in mind. The more platters and the bigger the drive, it's gonna make a pinch more noise inside. So ultimately, that's the real noise factor to take care of because the rear fan is completely controllable on both of these devices. Last thing to bear in mind is to do with power consumption. Because although both of these devices have quite a similar read and write speed, both kind of maxing out one GBE uh, uh, that's possible, um, both of them in terms of our consumption, it does differ greatly. The newer unit, the DS218 Plus, has a 17.23 watt um, uh, consumption whilst being accessed and 5.4 watts whilst idle. Whereas the older unit utilized 17.4 watts whilst in access and 7.4 watts whilst in idle. And once again, that does come back to our earlier point that the newer unit utilizes less power to do the same tasks. And the power consumption there is indicative of that. And that was taken with two 2 GB reds in a RAID 1 environment. But the, remember the price difference between these two devices wasn't exactly vast. And given that they both arrived with a two year manufacturer's warranty, for me, there's no reason not to spend that little bit extra to get so much more power and potential in the newer unit because ultimately you're going to save time and energy and that's really what you're getting back. That extra money is giving you um, a faster, more efficient NAS overall and that's why I do recommend you do get the DS218 Plus. So if you're interested in buying either of these then do go down there in the comments at the bottom but do bear in mind the top link there will take you straight to the NAS Compare article that you can see on the screen there that will tell you everything you need to know about both these devices. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Like any growing channel, I need the likes, I need the subs to keep things like this moving and keep you well informed. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on NAS Compares.